Behind every weather system, there's a team of individuals who are always on the job, watching, listening, and monitoring the subtle whispers in the atmosphere. In this edition of Weathering the Storm, we'll discover how the Barbados Meteorological Services take complex data into simple information that literally saves lives. We spoke with senior meteorologist Samelka Jackman, who outlined the role of the BMS. Here at the Met Office, we are basically the go-to with anything weather in Barbados. We are the official forecasting and warning office for any tropical cyclones, which are tropical storms and hurricanes, any severe weather that affects Barbados. So we do that for the general public. We do that also for informing the stakeholders, the government, the persons who are working behind the scenes. We give them that information. She explained that team members are always stationed at the facility because weather conditions can change in an instant. Basically, we don't sleep, as in we are always here always monitoring the weather 24 7 every day of the year so we always look for that potential of some sort of severe impact to Barbados. Um, so sometimes that might be on a short timeline. There have been tropical storms or there have been short impacts. So say for example, tropical storm Thomas, where persons um, tend to say, if you remember Thomas, like one minute you're at work and then the next minute there's Thomas. So we are here to monitor those short changes. Um, we also monitor for longer time out. So then say, for example, when we had Elsa, you would have heard about it days in advance and then you got the build up to it right till when it became a hurricane while we were being impacted by it. She also brought down what happens during the lead up to a weather system and how they decide to keep the public informed. From the get go, we might see something maybe a week or two weeks out. Generally, the further out in the forecast period, the less accurate something is. So then we might not share the information initially with the public, but we would give that heads up to the Department of Emergency Management and the other stakeholders in government. Then, we, as we get closer and the forecast becomes a little bit more accurate, we would start to give information to the public. Additional personnel are brought in to assist and provide extra oversight. Uh, at that time, we also begin to um, have additional staff on shift. So generally, we would start to see the management, the director, deputy director, and senior meteorologist on shift 24 7 along with the meteorologists and the assistants that are already here so you have that additional personnel we have the meteorologists and math assistants who are rostered to work at a particular time we have the net shift on duty as well so that there is some relief if we are here for 12 um, 24 hours you want to be able to relieve persons you have multiple persons in management here as well. Um, and then you have additional personnel here just so that you can have relief. You have more eyes um, for the analysis so that you can be more detailed in that analysis and give better updates. We also sat and had a chat with other team members who were on duty. I am currently analyzing a 700 millibar chart. And what this would do is help me to ascertain key features as it relates to tropical waves and other features that would indicate development into tropical cyclones and that kind of stuff. Um, the 700 millibar level is just one of many levels that we analyze from the surface right up to the top of the atmosphere. Meteorologists Christophe and Raquel added another layer of contacts about the comprehensive work they do. We essentially monitor all tropical waves in the Atlantic to the east of Barbados. And those tropical waves have the potential to become a depression and a storm or a hurricane and a major hurricane. Last year was a prime example of that. And some of the information that we would use would be satellite imagery in my rear. And that satellite imagery gives you an idea of the shape of the system, the size of the system. Operational wise, we do use our model data to go forward in time and that would give us a forecast. And obviously as the system approaches, we get a better forecast. As my colleague mentioned, five days out would be a little tricky, but as we get to less than five, that would be better. So we use our model data to give our forecast. And also as it gets closer to our region, probably within 400 kilometers or so, we're able to see it on our radar imagery. 
Samalka emphasized that even during active weather systems, they ensure that critical personnel can rest at home. This allows those who become exhausted during the lead-up period to recover and return refreshed. Something that persons also don't know is that we also make sure that we have critical personnel home resting during a system. So when we're all tired and completely drained after that lead up for days before, uh, when the rest of Barbados is pretty much just normal and life as normal, we're on high energy going. We have that person resting so that it can't take over after. So the impact of the tropical storm has gone, but guess what? We still have to continue to monitor the weather. So we still have to have people there ready to be high alert and monitoring for the potential of anything coming behind so that Barbados is always aware and always prepared. In the next edition of Weathering the Storm, we'll continue illuminating the work of the BMS by taking a closer look at some of the specialized tools used to support their operations from beyond the office.